Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hello there everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today I want to share with you three of the practices I am most looking forward to during this fall. I really enjoy making these videos. It helps me kind of plan out the season ahead and I love to get to hear from you all about the things you are planning and I also think it's a good way to give you maybe some inspiration and as I said I get to hear from you all and I certainly get a ton of inspiration for the season to come. Each of these practices are ones that I do every fall. These are very core aspects of my craft and something that's very important to me. I don't feel like I've truly experienced the autumn season if I haven't completed these practices by the time it's through, and I have been kind of counting down the days to begin some of them. So I'm very excited to share them here with you. You can catch them on this channel or on my other channel that is more of a vlog channel. I will be documenting probably between the two pretty evenly. So if you want to follow along on the journey, you can see them in these videos to come. So I'm very excited to dig in, but before we get started, this video is sponsored. So let's hear a little bit about that first. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is a website building and hosting company, and as I'm currently working on putting up a website, it is very exciting to get to partner with them. With Fluid Engine, a next generation website design system from Squarespace, it's never been easier for anyone to unlock creative design. You get to start with a best in class website template and customize every detail with reimagined drag and drop technology for desktop or mobile. You can stretch your imagination when it comes to online design with Fluid Engine, built in and ready to go on any new Squarespace site. One thing I really love about Squarespace is their flexible website template. You get to get started with one of their professional website templates with designs for every category and use case. Then customize your look, update the content, and add features to fit your unique needs. You can make any Squarespace template do what you want, so your idea, brand, or business stands out online on every device and can be as unique to you as you dream. Another thing that I really love about Squarespace is the ease of working an online store. Whether you sell physical, digital, or service products, Squarespace has the tools you need to start selling online. So if this sounds interesting to you, go to squarespace.com slash thegreenwitch to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring, and let's get back to the video. Alrighty, welcome back. Let's dig into the three practices that I am most looking forward to during this autumn season. First things first, this one is probably not a surprise to you, but I am very, very excited to make elderberry syrup. I make this every year. I've shared a few recipes before. If you would like to, I may share a new recipe for it. I will be sharing a recipe on Patreon very soon, if that's something you would like to see. This recipe includes one part tincture, one part infusion, and one part infused honey. So it is a very well-rounded recipe, which is not only delicious, but it is also very medicinal and magical in nature. Elderberry syrup itself is a beautiful immune stimulant, just elderberries in general are. And the process of making syrup is a fantastic way to consume elderberries and get their benefits. Elderberries are a plant that you need to process properly before ingesting. You need to cook them down or extract the beneficial parts of them in a safe way, otherwise you may not feel very good. The entirety of the elderberry plant contains a toxic compound that causes some pretty intense gastric upset. It is most concentrated in the leaves and the bark. It is far less concentrated in the berries and the flowers. But again, it is still there, so you need to cook down the elderberries for quite a while before using them. But the process of making elderberry syrup makes them very safe for consumption and brings out these medicinal benefits of it being an immune stimulant. Now for elderberry syrup to work in its immune stimulating properties, you do need to be taking it for a time before you get sick, ideally two weeks before you get sick for it to have an impact. But if you have been, it has a very significant impact on the duration of your illness 
and just how bad it gets. It can shorten it quite a bit. So personally for myself this year, I want to make enough elderberry syrup to last through the entirety of the winter, being able to take one to two tablespoons a day, or at least make sure that I have enough to take before I interact with events with large amounts of people, or just areas where I may be more likely to get sick, like traveling or again, large groups of people. Elderberries are also a very protective herb magically, which I do believe ties into its immune stimulating powers. And so I do like to have elderberry syrup around during this time as just a protective charm in general. Ingesting that allows for that magic to work inside and around you. Besides, making syrups are one of my favorite practices, especially one like this where I'm making a tincture, an infused honey, and a decoction rather than an infusion. It's a process that takes a while and I get to work with for many, many weeks very closely, making the tincture and the infused honey that takes about four to six weeks, while the decoction is something that's done in one day. So there's kind of this long process of getting to work my energy into it and connect to this medicine. And I just really adore that in my practice. It brings a lot of joy and connectedness to my practice. Now, if that sounds like a bit too much of an involved practice to you, I do have simpler recipes that you can complete in a day and a few hours. Um, I have them available on Patreon and also probably somewhere in here on YouTube as well. But like I said, if you're interested in the more in-depth process, I will be sharing that on Patreon soon and also if you want on YouTube, if enough of you are interested in that. So all in all, I absolutely adore making elderberry syrup. It is a major tradition of mine. Every autumn it brings me so much joy and it is such a beneficial thing to have through the winter months. And this is kind of that time we're wrapping up that preparation for the winter. And you'll notice that a lot of my most excited things involve wrapping up for winter. So with that in mind, the next practice I am most excited for is to make a fall protection wreath. I make one every single year. I adore fall herbs. I think that they are so beautiful. And this time of year is when you kind of want to amp up your protection charms. We're entering into a time of year that energy becomes a little bit more stagnant. People are starting to feel a little bit less joyful as the days get shorter. I know for myself, I absolutely adore fall. It brings a lot of joy, but this is also a time when the veils between existence is starting to get a little thinner. And with that can bring some unwelcomed guests. And so setting up protective charms on thresholds is a pretty good idea. Personally, I have opted for a wreath through these years for my front door. It has worked very well and it's a craft that I deeply, deeply enjoy. I often build it with a base of blackberry brambles. They are very, very protective in nature, especially if they have thorns. But this year I would like to try with a grape base. So we'll see how that goes. To make a protective wreath, simply you need to just add protective herbs like rose hips or blackberry or chrysanthemum. You're also welcome to add other properties that you might want to welcome into your home or have at the gate of it. Often at this time of year, I also like to add in things for prosperity. A good fall herb for that is goldenrod. And I also really enjoy adding thistles. They're also protective in nature and they come with the added benefit in their lore of protecting against thieves, which I just think is a good thing to have at your front door. And all of these herbs together are very beautiful and they just work really well to create this very sound protective charm. You may wish to add herbs like cinnamon that are going to amp up the protection spell and uh, make it work a little bit stronger as cinnamon is a fortifying herb. Personally, I really adore making magical wreaths. 
They are something that combine my passions of the craft with my passions of crafting. It's a very good marrying and it's quite a bit of fun to make something so beautiful to adorn my house with. So get creative with it and enjoy. I usually like to leave my wreaths or charms, door charms up for about three months or the duration of a season. And then I like to make them over again for the next season. But the autumn one is the one I'm always most excited for. I will be sharing a video of crafting this door charm here soon if you are interested in following along with that. Now, the last thing that I am most looking forward to is something that kind of moves forward through the summer months into the autumn months, and that is continuing to build my stores and preserves for the winter months. It's very important to me to bring as much of the abundance of summer into winter. Typically, this looks like freezing berries, making jams, or drying herbs. While I do very much believe that there is more power in plants and herbs during the months that they are growing, I am also someone whose practice revolves very heavily around plants. And during the winter, there are very few to work with comparatively. And so making sure that I have a well-built stock of herbs that I want to work with to get me through those kind of slower, darker, and less abundant days of winter is very, very important to the health of my craft and also just the health of myself. It brings me a lot of joy to get to add berries from the summer into my desserts that I make in February. It gets me through those last long days of the winter months and makes me very excited for the next season to come. There's just something a little bit bright about it, and sometimes you need that. This also pulls from a tradition from my childhood in my household. We used to can peaches every summer, and on the first snow day would open the first can of peaches. It was just this built-in tradition that brought summer into winter and a lot of joy. So I like to continue that with the herbs that I pick. While I may not get to grow peaches, I can forage for blackberries and huckleberries. I can dry calendula and nettles, all sorts of beautiful plants that are very, very useful medicinally, magically, or just are delicious like the berries. I've already made a blueberry jam this year. I'm very much looking forward to getting a blackberry jam done as well. And I have a few more herbs and plants that I want to gather, so I will be taking you along with me through that. The calendula is in full bloom right now at the cabin, and I will be gathering as much as I can very shortly before it all goes away to the frost. And so with that, those are the three practices that I'm most looking forward to this fall. I hope you got some good ideas from it. And again, I would be really interested to hear from you all about the practices that you are looking forward to in fall. There are so many things that I enjoy this season. This is really only the tip of the iceberg, and I will be sharing a lot of things with you in the few months to come. And with that, it's time to close out this video. So. If you can and would like to, I'd really appreciate it if you checked out my Patreon. There I share art, herbal profiles, book recommendations, and monthly workshops. I also have, as you know, another channel where I share vlogs of my day-to-day -day life, more magic, herbalism, all of those good things, and I wrote a book. It is all about spellcraft and herbal magic. It will take the beginner to the intermediate, and there's still a, quite a bit of good reference material in here for those of you who are more intermediate. So if you're interested, all of those are linked in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a lovely day and I can't wait to see you again soon. Bye.